Hey guys, what's up? We are back with some Chardonnays. A few months ago, I did a video on the Chardonnay challenge wherein my girlfriend and I took a blind taste test where we put head to head one Chardonnay from France and the other a Chardonnay from California. For this video, it's another Chardonnay versus Chardonnay challenge, but the difference this time, I'm flying solo, so obviously, no blind tasting here. But this is going to be interesting because these are two Chardonnays, both from the New World, one from Chile and one from Australia. Both are priced between 300 to 400 pesos, that's 8 to 10 dollars, so definitely value wines that I've got here. And most importantly, on Vivino, they are equally rated at 3.5 stars. So these two wines are neck and neck with a popular vote. So it's now up to me to find out which I like better. So while we're aerating the wines, I'm sharing with you the wines that we've got for today. So for our Chilean wine, this is Erazuris. This is from the Casablanca wine region. As in Chile, the land is divided into three different sections. The western part is coastal, so this is beside the sea. The middle is the valley. And on its eastern border would be the mountainous regions. This is where the Andes would be. I shared a little bit of this in my South American wines video. If you're curious, you can check that out now. Where this is coming from is the Casablanca wine region. It's a coastal wine region, meaning that this wine region is actually quite humid. Quite a contrast with our Australian wine. So for our second wine, our Chardonnay from Australia. This is branded as the Accomplice and it's made by the De Bortoli family. So the De Bortoli family, as the name suggests, would have Italian roots. The De Bortoli brand is actually on its fourth generation as a family business. So anyway, our Australian Chardonnay comes from the wine region of Riverina. It's in the southwest part of New South Wales. The interesting contrast of where this Chardonnay is grown is that from my research, it says that the climate here is very dry. We have this Chardonnay in Chile that is thriving in a very humid coastal climate versus one in Australia that's actually in a very dry area. As to which one is better, that's what I'm really curious to find out. So the color of this is more towards yellow, kind of like straw, so it's not as golden as some Chardonnays. On the nose, it's very fragrant, very menthol. This has some good alcohol content. You know, I like that. It's fragrant in a citrus fruity way. So pineapple, lemon. I know this is supposed to be oaked, but I'm not sensing that just yet. This is almost fragrant like a Sauvignon Blanc. It's a little more acidic and a little less full-bodied than a typical Chardonnay. As much as I read that this vineyard actually works with oaking their Chardonnays, I'm not really sensing that buttery finish. Hold on. <laughs> There's a little bit of a peachy, honey lemon taste. I'm not getting that buttery, oily, oaky finish that I was expecting, but that's not a bad thing because Chardonnays tend to be too buttery, too oaky. I am a fan of unoaked Chardonnay. Unoaked Chardonnay lets you taste the grape in a purer form, I guess. So I like it. All right, for the second wine. Let's compare. What do you think, guys? It seems that this Australian one is slightly more golden. I don't know if that's a consequence of the glass structure. Mm. Quite odd, but what I'm able to immediately recall as I smelled this was wheat beer. <laughs> Yeah, like Hoe Garden or maybe Odinger and local here in the Philippines, Brew Kettle. I don't know why that's the case. <laughs> Little tinge of um, banana scent and here it's like it's a light banana. I can't unsmell it now. It does taste like Hoe Garden. <laughs> but anyway, the Chardonnay from Australia is slightly sweeter, less citrus as the Chilean one. Also, this one is not buttery. It doesn't have that oaky popcorn aftertaste. It's more coconut oil rather than butter. Definitely less alcoholic, less acidic, less citrus. I guess I'm left now with the question, which do I like better? Do I agree with the 3.5 rating? I definitely agree that both are at least 3.5. Maybe let's go in for one last round. For my winner, we have this. 
guys, I'm not biased to Australia. Like I said before, we just get a lot of Australian wine here, I guess, because it's the nearest wine region. As the Philippines were like in the middle of nowhere in terms of wine, and the nearest wine region is Australia, which is in the middle of nowhere too. But anyway, I'm picking the Australian one over the Chilean one, because the Australian one is just a lot more balanced. The Chardonnay would be a crowd pleaser. It's a little easier to take in versus the Chilean Chardonnay. The Erasuris one from Chile is actually aggressive. This Chardonnay is, is a lot more tart, not as balanced as the Accomplice. So as my rating, this is a 7.3. And the Accomplice from the De Bortoli family, I would give this a 7.6. I guess in this round, Chardonnay grown in a drier region works better than Chardonnay grown in a humid region. So have you guys tried this wine? If you agree or disagree with me, let me know. If you have Chardonnays to recommend to me, let me know as well. Thanks for watching, thanks for drinking with me. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again next time.